So guys, if you are uppering for gate examination and want to prepare railway engineering, then these two questions are going to be very, very, very important for your preparation. So let's begin with the very first question and let's see what they're trying to ask us. So calculate the super elevation and the maximum permissible speed for two degree broad gauge transition curved on a high speed route with a maximum speed of 110 km per hour and the speed for calculating the equilibrium uh, super elevation as decided by the chief engineer is 80 km per hour and the booked speed of the train is 50 km per hour. So this is how they are going to give you the question where they are asking you what is the value of super elevation. So let's see how we can find out the super elevation. So the very first thing that you need to find out is the radius of the curve. How you can find out the radius of the curve by using this 1750 by d degree. Earlier it used to be 1720 right but now because we use 100 feet chord or 30.5 meter of chord that is the reason why we have 1750. So if you put the value of d over here which is 2 degree so from here the radius that you should get is 875 meter. I have all the calculation done already for you so that we don't waste time here in the calculation. So 875 should be the uh, radius that you should have. Okay, number two, once you have got the radius, number two thing, you have to find out the super elevation for equilibrium speed. So super elevation for equilibrium speed can be found out as GV square upon 127R. So this is a general formula for finding out the super elevation, doesn't matter for which velocity you are trying to find. Here G is what? It is not the track gauge, it is the dynamic gauge. For broad gauge, it is 1750mm. So 1750, velocity is given to us as 80. So 80 square by 127 into radius is 875 from here the super elevation value that you should get is 100.8 mm right now these two steps are i hope very clear to you all now let's move to the third step that you need to find out here and that is the super elevation corresponding to maximum sanctioned speed that is 110 kilometer per hour so how to find out that so it is going to be 1750 into 110 square upon 127 r which is 875 so from here the value of uh, this is going to be 190.6 mm right so this is the value of super elevation corresponding to maximum sanctioned speed or you can also call it theoretical kent now once you have got the equilibrium kent and the theoretical kent or actual kent and the theoretical kent then you need to find out the kent deficiency so if you see the kent deficiency is going to be 89.8 mm now guys remember we have to check with the uh, limit if this is under the limit so basically this is a high speed route that is why the limit is up to 100 mm otherwise it is 75 in general condition here it is high speed that is why uh, the limit is 100 mm so obviously this 89.8 is under the limit of 100 mm so it is permissible now the uh, after this the next step is going to be to find out the value of super elevation for good strain whose velocity is given to us as 50 km per hour so here again we will find out the value 1750 into 50 km per hour square upon 127 r r is 875 as you all know so when you solve it, the value that you should get for this particular velocity 50, that is 39.4 mm. 39.4 mm. Alright, once you have got this, now you have to check. As you have checked the Kent deficiency, now you are going to check the Kent axis. So from the actual Kent 100.8 this 39.4 if I remove so Kent axis is 61.4 again we have to check for the limit of Kent axis which is 75 mm so it is coming as how much uh, 75 mm so it is obviously under the limit so it is also permissible Kent deficiency under the limit Kent axis under the limit no problem now moving on to the last uh, thing that is maximum speed that we have to find out based on the Indian railway formula now what is Indian railway formula so as per the Indian railway formula the velocity is equals to 0.27 into your actual Kent and the Kent deficiency into the radius. That is how you find out the value. Earlier we used to have the Martins formula. Earlier we used to have the Martins formula. Put the values here everyone and get the answer. So it is going to be how much? It is going to be 0.27 under root 100.8 plus how much was the Kant deficiency? The Kant deficiency was 89.8 mm. So 89.8 mm into how much is the radius? Radius was 875. So 875 will give you the velocity as how much? As 110 
0.1 kilometer per hour. Now guys, remember, we also have a sanctioned high speed as 110 and here we are getting the value as 110.1. So which of them are going to be considered as our answer? So the maximum permissible speed on the curve is the least, least of the following. Which following? Maximum sanctioned speed that is 110 km per hour and second maximum or safe speed over the curve based on the theoretical consideration which come out as 110.1. So minimum of it is going to be our answer for maximum permissible speed and that is 110 km per hour. This is the first type of question that they can ask you and here everything was under the limit so question was very easy. Now let's solve the another question where nothing is going to be under the limit so how we are going to solve such question let's see that also. So calculate the super elevation and the maximum permissible speed for a 3 degree curve this time only the degree has changed otherwise everything is same. So now let's see for this particular question how it is going to work out. So guys if you see there is only one thing which have changed so let's see quickly the solution. So the radius of the curve in this case again how to find out it is 1750 by 3 degree only. So the radius is going to be changed in this particular question the radius that you should get is somewhere around let me quickly get through this. Alright, so we are having how much? It is 583.3. So 583.3 meter you will be getting. Now again, repeat, step will be same. Step will be same. Only one thing is going to be changed over here that the limits are not going to be under the preferable condition. So super elevation for the equilibrium speed. Again, you know the formula 1750 into AD square. This time again velocity is this. But, 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 but radius is something else. So 127 into 583. 0.3. So when you solve it and get the value of the super elevation with this particular speed, it is going to be 285.5 mm. How much? It is going to be sorry, 151.2 mm. This is with the help of your equilibrium speed. Okay, no problem. Now let's get it the value with the help of the maximum speed and this is going to be your theoretical Kent. So with this, let's see what is the value you are getting. 1750 into 110 square upon 127 and the radius that you were having was was 583.3 so 583.3 so with the help of this the super elevation or the theoretical Kent that you will be getting is 285.5 mm right now the st uh, step again is same find out the Kant deficiency find out the Kant deficiency so Kant deficiency is going to be how much 285 minus this 134 obviously it is over the limit limit was 100 mm so what we are going to do is we are going to consider the actual Kant in such a way that the Kant deficiency should remain 100 mm so if you find out 100 remove kar do se, and what you are going to get is 185.8 mm as the actual Kant but there is a problem what is the problem problem is that the actual Kant cannot go beyond 165 mm that is why we are going to consider the actual Kent as 165 mm only. Now, we are done with the Kent deficiency criteria. Now, we will go for the criteria of Kent axis. For that, we will find out the equilibrium speed uh, with the help of the 50 km per hour. So, here again, we will put the values 1750 into 50 square by 583. 0.3. So with the help of this, the value that you should get is 59 mm. And guys, as you check the Kant axis again, it is 106 mm, which is beyond the 75 mm limit. So now I have to make actual Kent in such a way that the value should remain 75 mm of the Kant axis. So if I do that, from there the actual Kent value that I should get is 134 mm, and this is going to be the final value of your actual Kent or to be very precise, 135 mm. Now, with the same condition, you have to again find out the high velocity, right? What is the maximum velocity? Same formula you have to use as the previous question. Here, I'll be using actual Kent, which was 135 Kent, uh, Kent deficiency, was 100 mm and the radius was 583.3. So based on this, the maximum velocity you should get is 99.6 km per hour. So now you have to again choose out of these two, either it is going to be how much? It is almost 100 only. So either the maximum sanctioned speed which was given to us as 110 and the one that we have found out which is 100 km per hour, least of them we have to consider. So the right answer for the maximum velocity or the permissible speed or safe speed is going to be 100 km per hour. So the first type of question you may get in the examination when your day is good, your luck is good and this type of question you will get if it is not your day and you have bad luck. But obviously now I have made you the practice this particular question. Now you can solve this and you can 
score the full marks in railway engineering thank you so much stay tuned to the channel and keep subscribing it thank you so much